Hello, hello, hello. Let me just get this bit off here. Yep. Hello, everyone, and um, welcome again to another Tomoka uh, online tasting. Uh, it looks like uh, I'm just trying to judge on here if we're live. Yeah, we are. So I can see it on my phone. So as you guys are coming in, if you can, just as normal, just put a, a quick comment in just to let me know that you are seeing us okay and hearing us okay. Um, we've got uh, Jassy's mic sorted from last week, so it's a lot clearer this time. Um, but it looks like everyone's coming in, which is good numbers wise. I know we've got quite a few people watching from the same house again, so I'll take that into account. Uh, but other than that, yes, so we got um, the first of like a double with Irish whiskies. Uh, the first one's day uh, looking at Matt Darcy and uh, Silky. And then I believe at the beginning of June is the next one, which is going to be uh, Waterford whiskey. Uh, tickets for that went out yesterday, but I believe most of you guys actually bought the double ticket. Uh, which is great. So you won't have to purchase a new one. That just be you automatically uh, entered for that. Um, we've just released a gin tasting as well. So any of you whiskey fans out there that do have your gin as well, we have navy strength gins. Um, so not for the faint of heart, some good strength uh, gins in there. Um, and then after these Irish ones done, we are going to look at, uh, I think potentially Balbeni was one that we've been looking at trying to get sorted uh, for maybe potentially end of June. Um, but other than that, Today we're taking a look at some fabulous Irish whiskey. Um, you know, we're, we're quite uh, we're quite focused on bringing people's attention to Irish whiskey because a lot of people see, uh, you know, it's consensus generally about you know sort of 10, 15 years behind Scotland in terms of the whiskey. I don't think it's I don't think it's that far in terms of how they say it. it's just it's education. It's getting people into the Irish whiskey uh, and and getting them to try it. You know, at the moment we have quite a lot of people coming to the store as well asking for Pacific Irish whiskeys, which is good. So it's definitely come into that forefront again, the same way that I guess New World and international whiskies are as well. So, um, but today we've got some fantastic ones to try. Uh, remember, just you know, put as many comments as, um, in the uh, the comment section as you can. Let us know the, the nose notes you get in, uh, anything on the taste. Uh, we're going to have a nice little video to watch at the beginning uh, to do with the Darcy's, but I'll get Jazz first to do an intro, uh, introduce our special guests, and then we'll get going from there. So let me just bring. Uh, Jass in and we can uh, get things going. How you doing? Hello. Yeah, so much clearer today. So much yeah. clearer. It's like H -H HD Jass. <laughs> I don't know what happened last week. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. The camera was fine. The camera was completely HD. So just, yeah, mm. gremlins in the works. Um, it looks like everyone's um, in okay because we've got, bear in mind, there's a, almost half watching from the same household. So that's good. So if you want to get going, uh, introduce our guests, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. Cool. All right, guys, uh, thanks for joining us. This is Irish Whiskey. Um, so actually, when we when we booked this in, we didn't realise today was going to be uh, World Whiskey Day, um, just because it was, you know, a couple of weeks in advance. Um, and so it is World Whiskey Day, uh, um, but we are doing Irish Whiskey, which is fine, uh, because it is actually the um, fastest growing um spirit in the world at the moment um you know just give you an idea of how much growth there is in ireland at the moment uh in 2010 there was there was only like four distilleries now we've got way over 35 possibly even 37 38 um in the space of that short period of time 10 11 years um and there's still more popping up so um we are going to be showcasing two new brands today uh and i'll leave them to tell you all about themselves in, as we go through the evening um and you've got four Four amazing whiskies to try. So, with that being said, let's bring on uh, our first uh, guest tonight. So, we have um, Michael and Connor, who are representing Matt Darcy Whiskey. Hi, just speak. Hello. How are you? Good evening, Hi. Josh. I have to say at outset that Connor is actually independent of Darcy's. Okay. We, we, we do not pay him for anything that he's about to say to you. <laughs> all be, it, it's all genuine third party. Uh, yeah, okay. Very uh, good. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, look, I know we've got, um, we've got a video to play. Um, so I just wanted to introduce you to everyone at home and watching. Um, uh, and then we'll we'll kind of come back to 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 you guys in a moment. But guys, the, the, we're going to play a video, uh, kind of giving you the whole story of the distillery. So if you want to pour some of your whiskey, bottle number one, into your glass, and you can start sipping on that while we um, 
while we watch this video and then we'll go to the actual tasting part when we come back but this gives you something to sip on while you watch the video so uh shane if you want to play the video we'll come back here in five minutes In the year 1144 AD, by royal charter, Morris MacLaughlin, High King of Ireland, re-established the ancient monastery of Newry by granting extensive lands around the valley to the Cistercian Order of Monks. The Cistercians were a force of commercial development throughout all of Central Europe and practiced improved methods of growing crops to increase yields. The charter gave them ownership of the mills in the area, and from that, the mash for beer and for spirits. The great abbey of Newry was dissolved during the Reformation, and the cathedral church was dismantled by its new owner, Nicholas Bagnall. It's clear from the evidence preserved in the Bodleian Library, Oxford, that the largest commercial property in the newly created town was the distillery. In 1747, Mr. John Rakestro, distiller of Newry, died, and in his will made mention to his back house, situated in High Street in the same locality. In the period beyond 1747, the population of Ireland experienced unprecedented growth. Three million persons grew to eight million persons by 1840. The English had their white spirit.
Championships. And so, I'm just going to bring you in, Jazz, because I think the video has stopped working. It's, it's, it's playing on my screen here, but I'm looking on the YouTube, and unfortunately, yeah, it looks like it stopped for halfway through. I don't know why. And generous okay. okay. Yeah. All right, well, let's bring the guys back in. Yeah. And, uh, Matt we might have to um, add it on as an attachment later by on. His nephew, yeah, that's fine. I can get that ready. Yeah. Who developed the brand. So sorry about that, guys. Uh, these technical hitches. I'm really sorry, guys. Uh, the video seemed to have stopped working out on the feed. Um, but what we'll do is we'll add it as an attachment um, after the after the session, if that's all right. Um, I, I think, Josh, we were going to try and win a prize as, as movie makers if we didn't make it as whiskey makers. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, that's out the window. So we've only got whiskey to bank on now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, so look, I've been, I've actually been sipping this uh, and nosing it while we've been watching that, yes. and um, yeah, it's it's very good. But before we jump into that, let let's hear a bit more about Michael. Why why you've now taken the distillery or, or starting the distillery and the brand back up? Well, that's the bit you were about to hear on the video. So right, okay, <laughs> enough. But uh, not only are we good at making videos, but we're very good at writing books. So uh, this is a book that I have. Um, Try to get into the camera properly, but I have written about the entire history, and um, part of me is that I'm an historian. But actually, I was born in the spirit trade. My father was a blender and uh, um, a manufacturer of whiskey. We never actually distilled, but um, the, if you if you follow the history of Irish whiskey, uh, the, the vast majority of it a century ago were blenders, and that's what's happening today. Uh, because the whiskey is still very young, and you say about the number of distilleries that open, well, that means that you have no one who has new whiskey more than eight or 10 years old, because they're all there. But however, there are a couple of older distilleries who had surplus whiskies. So they have over the last five years been selling older whiskey. So uh, one of the whiskies that we have is uh, known to you as a 17 year old, and that, which is now actually a 19 year old, but um, we bought it from an existing distillery. And the other whiskey that you might be using tonight is a, a 10 year old. And the 10 year old is bought from one of the long established distilleries. So a great deal of what you see going onto the market has been produced in two or three major centers mm. and, and are being blended. And in fact, um, some of the people in the market are making a virtue out of the blending, you know, where you might have thought that was a sort of a deficiency. But um, a very successful blender over in the west of Ireland called JJ Curry, uh, and they're making, they're making the play on blending. They do not intend to build a distillery. Now, yeah. where, where I come into the picture was that uh, we live in a small town of Newry, which is, which is now a small city. But um, I was the ch president of the Chamber of Commerce. I was following in the footsteps. As you would have heard, Matt Darcy was one of the town commissioners in the 1830s. So I found myself following in his footsteps. And um, I, I'm 75 years of age. I know I, I talk sometimes like I'm 55 and I feel like I'm 55, <laughs> but I'm actually 75. <laughs> I have to keep reminding myself. But um, the, uh, I sold the business that I've been in for 20 years. And um, I, when I saw the revival coming along four or five years ago, I thought, well, I know a wee bit about this business. I'll go back into this. And I determined by the very first documentation that I read about how to make a, a whiskey brand was um, a, one of the world gurus. I lifted his book to read about how to make the whiskey brand. And what he said in the first paragraph, and I'm, I'm one of those people, if I get a new gadget, I sort of throw the instruction books away. Yeah. I jump in and start to use it. Anyway, yep. in, in this case, I opened the first page and the first paragraph, what he said is, if you want me to sell your whiskey, tell me your story. At which stage I became possessed with the idea that the story was more important than the whiskey. Or <clears throat> I meant to say, equally as important as the whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, being a historian, I start, decided to look for the original distillery and that's where the video was leading you to. Um, it's a, a lot of pretty pictures of what we're doing currently, but um, after a year of research, I found the original sites, which had long since been forgotten. There was like a pub and a furniture shop and a chip shop on the site. 
So I decided I would go and I'd try and rent the derelict buildings behind it. Well, that took me another year and a bit because I had to buy the whole site, chip shop, pub and all oh, God. to get the site for the distillery. And I was determined I'm not going ahead without a place to anchor the story. Well, that was the, that's two and a half years that took to get that far. Then it has taken another two years almost to get through planning permission for a distillery in the middle of a built up city. Mm. Now, I was determined about that because I wanted to be anchored to the history. And our, our city is actually, and our site is about three minutes from the main motorway between Belfast and Dublin, which is the main artery to go to the Game of Thrones, the okay. Jack Causeway. Yeah. And um, it's very important for your, to sustain these, these small distilleries that they have a flow of visitors in the summertime. So visitor center became important. And all of the things that became important to me were a reflection of the earlier parts of my life, which were running businesses that turned out to be, looked like they were small, but turned out to absorb large amounts of capital. Mm. So at this stage, I'm about four million pounds in from a, pro, from, from a project that was, uh, I told my wife it was going to be 500,000. And um, <laughs> uh, um, well, it was when I was going to rent the derelict building at the back yeah yeah but um so we tripped over that and uh part of our journey was that um my elder brother who had been you know, in the family spirit business until some 10 or 15 years ago he came to see me to see the premises and so on and he said you're going about this the wrong way you would need to get your brand out and that's what then led me going into buying stocks of old whiskey so we spent that we spent at that stage three years ago. We spent about one and a half, well, just over a million, maybe uh, uh, pounds buying old whiskey. But thankfully, I've been offered two million pounds for it now. The actual stocks of whiskey are rising mm. actually, because of what I've described to you earlier. That all of the new players want to have things like eighteen-year-old, right? They want to have ten-year-old. And that's what we bought on my brother's advice like uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, it's leaving us in that position that we've got um, a variety you know, of, of, of levels. What you've got in your hand at the minute, and Connor will talk to you about in a second, that's empty level. And then with this 10 year old, which is now becoming 11 and 12 year old, and our 17 year old will be going out as 18 year old. So we've got th uh, three levels of it. And one of the things that you'd see, I see behind your shoulder there, but I, I do it also. We, we, we did the brand launch, which is highly elaborate. You know, this is a gift box. Uh, one of the things that I uh, realized also was that while the story was important, that sometimes you're not actually in the whiskey business, you're in the gift business. Mm -hmm. And that what you do must come out look like a wonderful gift. And these are very, selling very well as gifts, very elaborate packaging. There's a little plinth, a wooden plinth, a wooden plinth at the base. Yeah, you have one there. A little plinth at the base. There's a gold, well, it's actually metal, but it's not, not it not says pure gold, but it's um, a golden necktie with a 10 year on it. Yeah. Uh, the uh, labeling is embossed. Um, all sorts, all elaborations that was needed to make it a, a perfect gifting exercise and uh, thank you for allowing me to tell you all that because um it's not very often i get to sell anything um, so oh, i noticed inside also is the, there's the kind of the story as well right the history yes the, the history is on the uh, and the other ones the same but actually this is off the market at the minute they're all sold out um okay. i have to tell you about this one here now this is the I, I like to call this the million pound bottle. It cost me a first million pound to get this far. Yeah. Uh, it's um it's got number one on it. Amazing. So um it, it usually sits out in our front hall, you know, along with our our um our our uh, objects of art. So it sits out in the middle of the, in the in the front hall. Anyway, Connor is genuinely independent of us, but um he, he was, we picked him up because he was on another tasting 
and we thought if that fella can say the same things again, we need him. So Connor, would you want to take people through how you what do you think of this whiskey? No bother. Well, hopefully everyone has poured into their glass the the Darcy's whiskey. So I haven't put any water in mine now, so it's just poured from the bottle. So we'll start off with that. So if you smell it, it's got a nice vanilla sweetness to it. A floor, just a hint of a, a floor note coming into that. And then we'll try it. Thank it. Just the flavours that come out of this blend is fantastic. From there, it, the literally layers of flavour I'm getting. It's vanilla, hint of oak, honey, and then a, a nice uh, coffee finish, which I do believe there, it, there was whiskey that was finished in an imperial stout cask. And then there's a nice rye spice finish. Yeah, there's definitely yeah, a, a bit of, bit of, of pepper. Yeah, a wee bit of pepper, yeah, from the rye from the rye in it. We'll put a bit of water in to see what other flavors we can cut flavors we can find in the whiskey. So just put a drop of water in. Yeah, so guys if you've got some water then then add some in. I've noticed some people saying they're getting the, the apple. Yeah. But it's it's almost pear like for me. Yeah. Is it's kind of apple pears it's, it's kind of between the two. Hmm. Like Very fruity. Fantastic whiskey for the summer. That's the way I look at the weather's getting good. You want a nice glass of whiskey. Even it goes great in cocktails. This whiskey is absolutely superb in cocktails from putting it with ginger ale, whiskey sours, you yeah. name it. Um, it goes well. That's the perfect thing about this whiskey. It goes well with anything. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. this um, this is grain, right? This is all grain or is it a mixture? Uh, it's, a, it's a blend of grain and malt. Okay. The grain, I believe it or not, comes from uh, it, it comes from Europe, but it actually comes into the one point port, my hometown. Okay. And then that gets sent to the distillery. It's obviously it's sourced whiskey, and uh, the grain, the maize comes from well, gets imported into one point one point port. So it yeah. has the look, a sort of a local thing. It's been, it's just to me it's a fantastic blend to start off with to, to introduce yeah. us all to the Darcy range, you know. Yeah. And it's a perfect whiskey. If someone wants to get into whiskey, this whiskey is the best one to start off with. And then when you get all those flavors, you know, like the spice, you can go, okay, where's that coming from? You look it up, oh, rye, you know, might switch on to rye, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Have a good water. Let's have another sip and let's see what other flavors we can get. If the flavors are even enhanced, or there's more flavors. Yeah. You're right there because even because uh, it's hitting 40 percent, which is just a nice kind of entry yeah. level ABV. Right. So you can either sip it. You know, it works for like, as you say, the summertime. Yeah. You could mix it. And, and that's kind of what Irish has a little bit more over scotch. Right. Is that it's yeah. much more, di you know, there's much more diversity within what you can do with the spirit yeah we can put it in any we can put it in wood the scots the scottish can only do oak we can use any wood we want um so we have the freedom to even come up with different cask finishes uh, for the for the whiskies now mm. in Ireland, we do a thing um you get a glass of whiskey and then you get a beer with a whiskey chaser sort of thing and this yeah. Darcy's whiskey goes well with stouts and red ales, even APAs. Okay. Because when you drink the APA, if you get a good APA with fruity fruit notes, you drink your whiskey, you'll the fruit notes that you're talking about, apples and pears, will even be more prominent. Yeah. In this whiskey. Yeah. Like this is the to me, this is probably now again, like Michael says, I'm wholly independent from the from the Matt Darcy company. But this blend to me is probably the best Irish blend on the market right now amazing amazing so uh simon says that it's a lot smoother with the water even better yeah makes it even that's what i do i always drink my whiskey with a drop of water even if it's uh, as, as light as the 40 percent yeah always this, i actually need to try it either. i should try it with the water because it, it seems it, it already seems quite drinkable as yeah. it is yeah 
Well, there, it's, it's actually from four different casks, uh, which was all explained in the video. That's why we were... <laughs> Uh, but anyway, the um, uh, uh, from my memory, I'm now trying to desperately look it up on my on my computer when I'm talking to you. But uh, one of them was a a stout cask, and uh, the the others were um, uh, I don't think there's anything distinctive other than that there was a bourbon cask, and um, uh, I'm, I'm I'm at a loss now because it was all in the video which I can't play. Uh, uh, quickly for you, but it was uh, that four-year-old is a mixture of four, four, um, uh, and I think the malt in it is about ten percent malt and ninety percent grain whiskies. Okay, which gives you that lovely lightness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what? What? What would I mean? Is this is this is going to be part of the the range going forward, or would this kind of go go away over time once you start? Well, well, that one is capable of reproducing because we had uh, we bought a lot of old uh, bought, bought a lot of young whiskey along with the old whiskey, so that one's uh, capable of being, of being maintained. And um, the other things, are, are you going to do tasting of ten year old here this evening? We are, we are indeed. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, we're going to move on to that in a second. Yeah, yeah. Well, the ten year old's more difficult to maintain, um, because it it was ten, eighteen months ago, so it's coming on to be near twelve year old now. Mm. Um, and they, well, I'm not spoiled with what's in the 10 year old, you get down to taste it there. But okay. uh, uh, if you have time for an anecdote there, I like telling people jokes and stories, you know, instead of getting to serious things. But uh, I'm so glad what Connor said about the whiskey was good because uh, one of my relatives said the same thing to me a short while ago. And it reminded me of a story here of a, a man who's a multi billionaire from this area who built up one of the world's greatest ele electronics business. He was making oil filled radiators here 40 years ago and he was so busy he didn't get up to see his mother when he got up to see his mother in the winter time he went in and he was astounded she had a dimplex radiator and he said but mommy i make those i make the same thing and the mommy says oh son i wanted a good one <laughs> that man that man now owns dimplex okay. right? so the uh, the, the reason I like telling that anecdote is, is that my friends and relatives are astounded that the whiskey is actually good. <laughs> <laughs> it is lovely. It's, it's very, very good. Re really good. I, I've not tried it until now. And um, yeah, I was very much looking forward to it. So should we, should we jump onto the 10? Let's move yeah. on to the 10. So this is bottle number two. Yep. This and is the one that comes in this lovely packaging with the with the wooden plinth and so on at the bottom so bottle number two guys um so there was a question actually how will the taste change once you start distilling yourself and i think he means particularly to the the the, the first one we tried uh, the four-year-old, yes, it will, because um, the, it'll be difficult to replicate where that came from. And um, uh, I would think that at the lower end, we would be blending with other from other distilleries in the lower end, because remember, it's going to be four years from we get distilling to be able to sell our own whiskey. Um, and we'll have to make a gradual transition at that time. Um, so it obviously will change, and um, I think we're we're going under the banner currently of saying that each of these iterations are limited editions for that very reason. We're not sure, and we can't be sure that there'll be consistency. But I I, I think that's what the excitement is coming from. Um, I I would um, say that uh, Bush Mills or Powers uh, or Jamisons have a range of whiskies that haven't changed over the years. Mm. And what's basically happening is, is to get into the market you have to differentiate uh, excuse me for um demeaning it in any way but um i haven't been in other businesses for, uh, most of the rest of my life i see this as somewhere like uh, home bakeries and specialist confectionaries your production levels will be low you're not going to take over the mass markets so your brown loaf will be slightly different in two years time and you start putting in spelt and honey 
and you'll be doing something else and something else to keep differentiating. So mm-hmm. I don't see the smaller distiller- distilleries maintaining a stale drink like that, and it, and they couldn't survive anyway because they'll only survive. And excuse me for being so economical, sorry, an economist, but that's where I came from. Business is making money, not mm. not hobby. You know, it's not a hobby to say, oh, I want to get in there and I want to make the world's greatest whiskey. It's how is this sustainable? Because I wanted this to be sustainable for our city. And therefore, I have to see what the model is. And the model is likely to be continuous differentiation. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that probably has to be the way going forward, right? Because you need to keep interest in your in your brand. And, you know, I guess when you go, if you go global, then you have something that is regular and consistent to reach those markets. But you need to create diversity within the portfolio as well. Yeah. Well, that's it. I, I, I can't see the two things happening. I can't see ma- mass production and uh, uh, sustaining itself because well, there are a couple of larger dis- uh, distilleries in those new ones and people... There's another one coming on board with with the, with the huge huge ambitions as well, but um, uh, again, uh, I'm 75. I don't need to worry about it. I won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let someone else worry about it. It's on Tony's hands. Yeah, my son, who's not visible on screen. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the, the the one thing that we missed the delight of, of of celebrating by our video failing on is is that at the beginning of the video you'd see that uh, we we now make claim to be Ireland's oldest distillery, and um, there's another famous distillery which uh, does claim that. But um, being an historian, I have um, I can debunk their claims, but uh, we'll not mention them on the air. But. Uh, <laughs> We clearly had a distillery here in 1575. It's on the rent rolls. And it's not even kept in iron for somebody to fiddle at them. It's in the Bodleian Library in Oxford. And you know people in Oxford are so honourable that there was nobody in there fiddling that fiddling those old deeds. It's actual. Yeah. Fact, actual. And uh, it wasn't built in 1575. It was built much earlier by the Cistercian monks Mm-hmm. So, um, a, the credential that I'm claiming on uh, is uh, the oldest historically, not the oldest continuously, and none of them are the oldest continuously because they all had breaks and they all had had uh, difficulties. Anyway, uh, do you want to move on to the ten-year-old? Let's do it. I think I think people have people have poured it and uh, and are very eager. So this is jumping up ABV to forty-six. Yep. Was there a reason for that, or is this is where it sat? Um, the, the the reason was to, to distinguish it in its taste. Um, what you actually, what you're, well, a bit, you Connor can tell you when he's going to taste it, but I'll tell you what it's made up of. It's uh, made up of a, a what was a ten year old grain, but when it was when it was first mixed, and ten uh, percent of the seventeen year old. Okay. And it was, then finished in a port cask. So, um, which, which is lovely. So it, uh, it's actually is added to the expense. And when I was telling you earlier about the, the rate at which whiskey, Irish whiskey is escalated in cost, um, that's 17 year old uh, that we put into that 18, 12, 12 months ago. We got a bottle 12 months ago. At that time, that uh, a, a uh, an LPA, as is you know, a liquid, a, a liter of proof alcohol, we bought it at fifty euros a, uh, a liter. I have turned down offers within the last month to sell that same liquid at one hundred and forty euros a liter. So it would be difficult to put something into a ten-year-old again, yeah, and expect it to meet the market price. So um, it's got completely scarce, and. Uh, we haven't decided ourselves yet because we're still a good stock of that 10 year old um, to, uh, to sell off. And we haven't decided whether or not we're going to put 18 year old in, in, say, into a 10, 11 year, 12 year old, or whether we're just going to try 
find a younger malt to put mm -hmm. into it. So yeah. uh, that 10 year old is likely to be a one off in that I don't think there will be anyone wanting to sell blend and sell that same product again at that same price. Yeah. So guys, you heard it here. If you want it, then uh, there's probably only a few handful of, well, no, so not, many bottles left. Right, we're not down that far, but um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't, would expect it to go, yeah. So let's go in. Let's 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 give it a nose, Connor. Yep. We well, haven't put any water in, so we'll start off with no water in the whiskey. So hopefully you have it all poured out. But now this one, the fruit notes would just be more prominent in this because of the port. So more of a citrus fruit into this. There's a nice yeah. sweet hint as well in the spice. Now, of course, it's 46%. So as soon as you smell it, the alcohol's vapors are going to go up. We'll taste it with no water and let's see what flavors we can get from it. So, There's something milky there as well. Something creamy, milky. I think that comes from the malt, the malt in the blend. But mm -hmm. see when you when you drink it, it's just sweet, dried fruits, spicy notes. I, I'm getting like there's a hint of like butterscotch, the same, which is something I forgot to say about the four-year-old, the butterscotch note. There's a hint of the butterscotch note in this one. Yeah. So we'll try it with water and let's see what happens with that. So, water will get diluted, but it will help with other the other flavors in it. So, there we go. We're getting. I don't have any water, but I'm sure others will tell us. Yeah, I'd be very interested. I want to see what they're all, what they get from it. So, help me out. Oh, adding more now. So, Tim said adding the water increases yeah. that spicy finish, some nutmeg. Yeah. Shane noticed it is very creamy and, and that oil, yeah. you know, those lovely long legs down the glass, probably due to the ABV and also that that barley in there, maybe. Yeah. I think, uh, Connor, you, you might want to mention for uh, anyone who's, who's not au fait with it, that the 46% uh, proof uh, 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 avoids the uh, chill filtering. Oh, yes. I forgot to say that. This one avoids the, the non-chill filter, so it's kept all those flavor compounds in. Yeah. Where if it's, you know, the 40% has been chill filtered. So, you know, it, it might have lost a hint of flavor, but this is 46, so what you're getting is, to a certain degree, a, a low ABV cask strength. So you're getting full-blown flavors directly from the cask, you know? But I think it works, right? Because the first one with that chill filter helps with that delicate yeah. lightness that yeah. you want at 40%. And then this one packs a punch at the ABV, yeah. but also packs a punch with more flavor, you know, because it's, you haven't chill filtered. Like, there's nothing wrong with the chill filter. See, nobody, everyone's all talking about we're non chill filter, but to me, there's no depth. Like, you know, it's, right, it's filtered, it's not filtered, or. This one is class, and I love what I love too is about the Matt Darcy Distillery. Each whiskey is basically the slogan is whiskey with history. So what I like about this port finish, Neri had a port, but that I think that's that's good as a tribute to the city or you know years ago the town of Neri. Mm. Um, so I would like to say it'd be the spirit of Neri as it symbolizes Neri with the port. You know, obviously the grain will come in from one point port. You know, yeah. and as far as I know, the Matt Darcy distillery itself will be a malt distillery. So the malt will be, be barley from it, all over the It'll place. be a malt distillery, yeah? As far as I'm aware, yeah. So you'll be producing single malt? Single yes. Malt, single pot still. I think we'll only be doing malt. <laughs> it'll be easy to buy grain off all, all the people. Yeah. I think. Anyway, in the absence of the, the of the video letting us down, this is one of Darcy's original advertising posters. Oh, I see. And these posters appear in pubs across the world. When people are on holidays, they sent me 
uh, photographs of this hanging in, in pubs. And um, it's uh, the, the Darcy's were actually a very nationalist, Irish nationalist family. And this was meant to represent, you know, an idyllic scene of Ireland, people out in the field cutting the barley. Yeah. And the lady, the lady on, the, on the, what would she be on the left or right side of that? That is, <laughs> that's the symbolism of Hibernia, you know, Ireland in a beautiful lady. And at her foot, there's an Irish wolfhound. And down below them in the valley, you could actually see where I'm sitting, where I live, and where Connor lives a few miles further on. There's a, we're in a valley, um, which is like a fjord. It's actually called Carling Fjord Loch. You know, the, the, the Vikings named it um, yeah. Carling Fjord. Yeah. Uh, that's a poster from the 1880s. So you can see there's a, a, a long heritage with it. Yeah. And, um, what you would have seen on the video, I'm just going to hold you up on hand there, is um, uh, and this drawing here. You see these where that green part is in the middle of it? That's the pit that I went to rent four years ago and ended up having to buy that pub. <laughs> and the chip shop <laughs> and the post office. And the chip shop. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the chip shop was until I got rid of all that. <laughs> Uh, it's right bang in the middle of the city um, wow. with, with uh, shops around it and um, last year I, if you see where the cars are at the back of that there, we don't hold that up I, I actually bought the car park at the back of the local council okay so that we would have uh, room to, to, to uh, uh, let you all park when you come to visit us and we will be there, don't worry about that absolutely well, and then so this that, is planned. And then I wrote the book. Yeah. Anyway. Which is what we see on the on this, uh, which is the image we see on the, the four-year-old. Yeah, there's a bit oh, of that. controversy. Some people think that's a bit of, um, well, this person who, who last criticised it said to me, I think that's a bit of fiddly D, or what some might, people might call, you know, if you're listening to Irish music, you might call it uh, jiggery, whatever. You know, I suppose fiddly D music would be a better word, but it's a bit of over Irishness. But I, I liked it. I thought it, I, I thought it um, helped promote the the, the township. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is which is what you you're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now I've left this in the glass for a little bit. I can really get some of that dried fruit coming through a lot more now from that port. Not that I was noticing. I left it there and I drank a sip. I was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> The amount of flavour that's packed into this bottle is just insane. Like, yeah, it is. Like, if you haven't bought it, you have to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you get the, like, it I think this whiskey, if you leave it for a while, get let it get the oxygen and all that. Are the flavours that come out is just amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. It, to me, that's what I love. Like, I'm a, I'm a brewer, so you know, I make a local craft beer. Like, but what I got excited when I heard there was a distillery getting built in in my local city. Mm. I just got excited and when we got told that the airport, this was back last year when lockdown happened and we were, our flight yeah. got cancelled, I took the money and I went and bought this and mm -hmm. it was the best thing I ever bought. I took it home, opened up, drank it and I was like, wow, like this is, there was a distillery in my local area. This is, and it's been, it's rising from the ashes again, you know? Yeah. And, I'm and, he, like, and, and oh. Jazz, I, I need to stop him because he's still not going to get any commission. He's, doing, he's trying so hard. He's trying so hard. <laughs> oh, it, it's one of the things. It, it, it's a thing now to be proud of in my area because it's going to bring people into the local area as well. Yeah. You know, like people go to Dublin, they're looking to go to those up the dub the, in the Liberties. Now mm -hmm. people are going to stop off in Uri and Monaghan, go down to Monaghan Street and see the historical, this historical distillery that has what, since 11. What was it, 1155 or 1166 mm. or something we've been distilling mm. so as a local brewer it is something they think in my area we're proud of like you know yeah. amazing well, there Joss, uh, Joss, have we overstood our overstayed our welcome no no we, we, we we're good we are we are we are at the end of our 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 part with you and, and we really thank you for spending your time with us and and for us taking up so much of your time but did you, you had something you wanted to say? No, no, I was a bit worried. I, I thought Tony had told me in the beginning it was 30 minutes and I, and I didn't want to be accused later on of 
of uh, squeezing out someone else out of their time. No, no, we got we got Jimmy coming on very very next, so uh, we, we're okay, we're good. Right. So uh, where are you located? We're we're over in St Albans, in in Harp, in in just outside London. Oh, I know it well. My brother, who hopefully is watching, um, he had a large business there for a good number of years, a big solicitor's firm called McEwen's. Okay. Uh, so we, we know it quite well, yeah. Oh, very good. Uh -huh. Very good. Okay. Yeah, so you should come and see us when, when, you, when you're over at some point, and we'll, we'll definitely come. So when's the distillery due to be kind of complete? And, and oh, ready? well, uh, we've just got through the second iteration of the planning. Um, so that should be about 11, 10 to 12 months from now. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, we'll definitely uh, we'll look forward to that. We'll keep in touch. And, and you know, I'm sure some of our uh, guests tonight will be wanting to come over. But thank you, Michael. And thank you, Connor. Thanks for showing us and talking to us about Matt Darcy and the new kids on the block. Thank oh, you. At some point. Okay. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, guys, thank you very much. It's been it's really good, really good whiskey. Uh, hey, Josh, I forgot to tell you why I don't drink whiskey. Oh, yeah, 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 go on. Yeah, well, when I told you my father was a blender and a bonder. Well, when I was about five or six years of age, he had become pr pretty prosperous, and we bought a nice house out in the countryside. One of the difficulties was that there was no town water supply. We had a spring well, and in the summertime, this spring well, which we had connected by an electric pump up into a tank in our roof space in our house, this this spring well would dry up in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And my mother would telephone back into the town and say, Terry, would you bring home some water? So my father obliged and he filled a whiskey barrel with water and he brought it home and he put a little pipe into it and connected it to the pump and pumped it up into the tank at the top of the house. So that when we were having showers and washing our hands, we were drinking whiskey. <laughs> That's going to do it for you, I'm sure, at five or six years old. Yeah, it could have gone two ways. It could have gone either way, couldn't it? Could have. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, right. guys. Thank you okay. very much. Thanks for spending your Saturday evening with us. Um, and really good, guys. Don't forget, we have 15% discount on these two whiskeys tonight as well. So if you do want to you are interested and you do like any of them then uh, we'll let you know the prices and also you get that 15 percent discount um so guys thank you very very much and uh we'll look forward to seeing you very soon thank you bye well, josh thank you. thank you take care bye so matt darcy good stories good fun good irish irish humor as well and uh and good irish whiskey so uh if you if you are new to irish whiskey then that's just kind of just some of the stuff um that is happening in ireland at the moment and now moving on quickly to our other distillery so we are joined by jimmy and he's representing um this brand called silky Hi. hey jimmy how are you uh, yeah very well how are you yeah good thanks thanks good, for good. uh hanging around and waiting no no not at all not at all not at all no pressure, no pressure. Going second. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> it's good to um, put a name, uh, face to a name. It is. Because uh, yeah, we've yeah. spoken of uh, many times, but uh, because we've of never current, met. the current climate, we've not, uh, yeah, we've not had a chance to meet yet. Um, no. Yeah, yeah, no. It's, uh, likewise, likewise. Um, so, what, so whereabouts are you? So I'm, I'm actually, I mean, the more keen area of you might realise that I don't have an Irish accent, but I promise I'm marrying an Irish woman and I've been working with this brand for many years now. So uh, makes hopefully, you Irish. Hopefully, hopefully that will make up for it. But I'm actually in Brixton in South London. So, uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little, bit, a little bit more local. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not as green either. No, 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 exactly. Sadly not. A little bit more. Uh, yeah, yeah. A little bit more uh, built up. <laughs> yeah. So, so look, this is this is a brand called Silky. Now, the the the. The, the brand is called Silky, but the distillery is called? So the distillery is called Sleeve League Distillers, um, which is spelt S-L-I-B-H-L-I-A-G, which is kind of, yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah it's very, very Gaelic. Very, very, very Gaelic name, but it's pronounced Sleeve League. Sleeve uh, League, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just listening to the, 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 the Darcy guys, I think we're probably, um, I mean, they make a great product, I'm a fan, but we're, we're, we're probably uh, maybe a year down the line 
from where they are. So we're in a similar position as in we're in the process of building a distillery, um, which had it not been for um, some planning issues and also the pandemic would be built by now, um, but will be done, uh, will be built by the end of the year, which is why, which is why at the moment we're going by Sleeve League Distillers, because yeah. this, these two that we're going to talk about tonight are blends uh, that are being blended elsewhere. They do also make a gin and a vodka, which are blended in Sleeve League or Ardra, the little town next to Sleeve League. Um, but yeah, yeah, so we're, we're, we're kind of looking at their plan, their exciting plans there. I don't think I have them to hand, unfortunately, but we have some sort of uh, some 3D yeah. CGI images of, uh, yeah, of where we're going with our distillery. Absolutely. So that's going to be very soon. Um, and when were these two released then? When, when was this launched? Yeah, so I mean the 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 regular silky, which is the the green bottle here, um, that was originally released uh, about five years ago. Uh, however, it was a different blend. Uh, they 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 re uh, they they kind of took it took a took a step back um, and changed the blend a little bit uh, about two years ago. Okay. Uh, and the dark silky here uh, came out between lockdowns one and two, I believe. Uh, so yeah, a bit of a bit of a soft launch. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, has uh, well, despite that, to be fair, you know, we, it, they've got a good presence online, and obviously, there's been a lot of uh, drinking at home, and uh, the dark silky's done very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and so so. Yeah, I think you know what. Maybe we should just jump into the first one and and see yeah. what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So all, all they changed, really, I mean, so the, the, these guys were one of the, well, a little bit about the distiller is uh, the is that he's, both of his, Donegal, where they are based, uh, has a long history of distilling. However, the vast majority of that was actually illicit distilling, making poteen. Uh, now, <laughs> both, both of his grandfathers uh, were were bootleggers back in the day uh, and the distillery they're building will actually be the first distillery in Donegal in about 200 years um, so it's quite a big thing and we like what the, the guys were saying about the local area um, people are quite excited about it because you do going down it is beautiful but you do kind of feel that it's still it still probably hasn't 100 percent recovered from from you know what happened in 2000 2006 and 7 with the with the economy and yeah. they they, they everyone's very very excited about it because it's going to bring business to the area it's going to bring visitors to the area and it's going to be a good thing but at the moment these are blended elsewhere the sil silky this is the second variation what they changed from the first variation was that um eager to push forward and um kind of get something closer to to what they will be distilling when they when they do it themselves was they added a, a three percent peated malt um so it is a blend of three to five uh, year aged uh, whiskies, uh, which are ex Berman, ex Sherry, uh, American oak, oak, and three percent peated malt. So it has at the very base of it that easy drinking Irish blend vibe to it, but it's also got a bit of a grown up kind of more towards. I always describe to people it's at forty six percent. I describe to people as something that. Um, that, that, you know, a whiskey connoisseur isn't, you know, quite often they can turn their nose up at blends a little bit, is going to enjoy as well because it's got that bit of maturity. It's at 46%. It's got that peated malt. But yeah. also at the same time, it's probably if a whiskey connoisseur was going to introduce whiskey, someone who never drunk it before, you know, it's a good one that, that, that people get their heads around. So actually, much similar to, I'm, I'm familiar with Darcy's and much, much, it does have a lot of um, apple on the nose, has a lot of toffee as well toffee apple if you like um but it should be yeah it should get that on the nose and it should be yeah. it, it's very sweet and easy to drink but also it has that 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 peated malt sort of kick towards the end as well but um yeah no that's definitely lovely. getting that honey that butterscotch yeah 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 all those lovely sort of fruity fruity flavors and slightly yeah. peated as well i've just seen sarah k pop up there so andulaman is the gin that's the other side of um, it's, it's a husband and wife team. Um, so Moira okay. is, uh, makes Andulam and Jim and James, who used to work for, he used to be an MD for grants in the Southern Hemisphere and he sort of champions the whiskey. Um, so they're, they're, they're the pair. Um, and yeah, the Andulam actually just won a gold award at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. <laughs> so you, yeah, so. Ah, so this one award this, this year, didn't it? Did it, this one award this, this year? The, 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 the silky with the, so. I mean, for those for, for anyone watching or listening, I'm sure you have seen uh, tons of bottles um, in shops and everywhere 
and with medals on i'm not don't want to take anything away because every medal is worth winning but san francisco generally is the is the one that that we've not entered it's the only one we haven't entered yet because we didn't want to enter it until we felt that we were really ready because it really is kind of maybe the most prestigious one so the the silky won a silver for best blended irish whiskey uh, and the dark silky won a double gold for best blended irish whiskey so in theory according to those judges and that judging panel the dark silky until the next next year uh, we can we can say is uh, potentially the best blended irish whiskey or, on the market so yeah we're, we're very yeah. proud we're very yeah proud. it's a great achievement and i should point out just just because uh for, well i should point out just just for for tonight is that i think that darcy won that same award last year so uh, we have both of the last two winners well, on, on the same tasting well there you go there you go well that's the thing with these things isn't it, is it li the liquid stays the same but the competition moves on so yeah <laughs> but exactly. that's why you want to keep innovating <laughs> you got to keep innovating exactly so this is really i mean it's got so much flavor because I assumed it's going to be quite light, you know, and, and kind of. Well, yeah, I mean, not to take anything away because the, 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 the original blend of the Silky was very, very popular. And if I'm, yeah, I mean, if we're being totally honest and putting cards on the table, um, that was at 40% um, and was very easy to drink. And I think probably because of the delay of the distillery being built, James got, who owns it, got a bit anxious and was like, well, this was a good sort of blend to put out there, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm itching, I'm chomping at the bit to make something that's a bit more sophisticated. And until yeah. my distillery is here, I can't do that. So that's why he sort of amended the the the, um, the blend and also brought out the Dark Silky. And I'll tell you why the Dark Silky is kind of a bit deeper even further. But yeah, I mean, I think it's, I mean, a lot of people say, yeah, a lot of feedback that I get from it is that they, they wouldn't know it was 46% if you didn't tell them, because uh, it is very easy to drink. It is very soft. Um, but that, that, that little 3% peated mould really kind of, uh, yeah, gives it a bit more character and a bit more, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And there's so much flavour. Like, there's so much complexity. And, you know, your palate goes on a little journey as, as it goes through. It's, it's, and it's really quite got a good, nice kind of, fairly decent finish on it yeah yeah I, mean, I, think, I think a lot i think i think so i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna, i'm not gonna name names i think some of the bigger for me some of the bigger known blended whiskies out there can be quite dry so they're, they're very enjoyable to drink but it's a two second experience and it's gone uh and with this kind of yeah they i mean first of all james is very um keen to bring i mentioned it again bring into uh i mean he, he said that you know the irish were the first to we won't get into it, but the Irish were the first to use peat in 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 whiskey. But when you think of peated whiskey, you do think of Scotch. Uh, yeah. So one one of his missions is like almost his raison d'être is to bring peated whiskey and smoky whiskey and make it so it's not just seen as a Scotch thing and really bring it back into like the Irish market uh, mm. or, and almost reclaim that element of 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 whiskey to be to be Irish because uh, he well the Irish claim that they were there first but I don't know said it's it <laughs> yeah I mean the thing is there's interesting there's not a lot of Irish doing smoky whiskey is there really no 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 and it's interesting because you know what what these guys do and they do really well is that um and not to get off topic too long they, they really do take uh everything that it, all the heritage and everything that is related to donegal um and, and 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 try and put it into their products so for example the 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 um the gin that was mentioned that was mentioned briefly earlier um they, they use uh, seaweed five different seaweeds as botanicals now in, in that gin now okay. Don, donegal was the only county not to record any deaths from the potato famine because everyone took to eating seaweed so they took that and they put it into it James, you can go to a little village in Dolagul that has been preserved that his great grandmother would have lived in, and the entire place, all of it's heated by peat. There's peat everywhere, and that's what his grandmother would have, you know, would have been a real kind of um, source of like heat and everything for them was peat, and it, it was just everywhere. And they used it as a, as a fuel and an ingredient and an everything. So he's really kind of they really delved deep into the history of Donegal and yeah. What and looked at those things and tried to put them into all of their products and even going into that i mean the, the name the silky i don't i don't know jess do you know why it's called the silky 
it's the seals, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Well, seal is what it's, it's a, the way we describe it is a shape shifting siren. Uh, <laughs> is a, is a, is a, a seal at sea and a beautiful woman on land. Um, so we've gone halfway and put sort of a, a mermaid character on the front. But, you know, there's there, there's Irish tales and fables about, you know, the silky or selkie is often spelled as in Gaelic. Uh, yeah, as a, as a seal like creature that when, when she comes to land, she becomes a beautiful woman and irresistible to men. But the she can never resist going back to the sea so mm. there's that one of those kind of like uh bittersweet love stories if you like or, or legend legends um so yeah. again taking that and you know a lot of people i mean in, in ireland you say you say silky and you know a, a fair fair few people know what you're talking about but it's um yeah but it's uh it, it's something that perhaps isn't so people in england aren't so afraid with which is really yeah bringing that back into the product and taking irish history irish heritage specifically donegal heritage and yeah. putting the brands and really championing all that at the forefront of it so is silky going to be the brand going forward once you've kind of started the sleeve new uh, league distillery no i think uh once the distillery so the distillery is going to be uh about the same size if not slightly bigger than teeling's distillery okay uh, so it's going to be a fair old size. Um, and no, it probably will be the first single malt will be, but they're going to make everything. I think it's probably within a year of the distillery being complete, you'll see them produce a poutine. Uh, and because uh, that's coming back in again, that's coming now. It's been, um, uh, what do we call it now? It's been re legalized and kind of like uh, classified. Uh, yeah. it's that's coming back into the fray and that will be something different and the single malts will be will, will may, maybe under a different brand but um i mean the distillery really is we've just had a three million euro investment from asahi um so it's uh, and we did a we did a crowdfunding uh, operation between again i think between lockdown two and three maybe where we were aiming, where we were aiming to get about a million and we, we raised two um so it really is um yeah, it's going from strength to strength, and yeah, it, it does. I mean, I'm, I'm not just name dropping, dropping or bragging, but when when a company like Asahi that obviously has Nika whiskey okay. under their under their umbrella, put yeah. shows an interest, it gives you the confidence that you're doing something right uh, at the very least. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not sure. I think the Silkies will always be the blends, but what they will do is they are. I mean, they've already released a red Silky, which maybe we can talk about at some point. Where yeah. I think. A I think only 20 cases hit UK shores, uh, sorry, English shores. And uh, what they, they 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 took the silky and they rested it in Ribeiro cask for about six weeks. So it is oh, red, red. Yeah, issue. red wine, and Portuguese, red, yeah, Spanish. Yeah, it's basically Tempranillo. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, it's Spanish Tempranillo. But, uh, but yeah, it's got a reddish wine finish. And like I say, there's 20 cases in the UK and then that's gone. Uh, and I believe down the line, maybe later this year, they're going to do one in rum casks. So I think Silky, you're probably going to find they're going to do another one, which is going to be darker than the darkest Silky in colour and will be even more peated as they move towards releasing their first single malt, which will be quite a heavily peated whiskey. Uh, and so, yeah, they'll expand on the range. But yeah. when they making their own single malts, it will probably be a different name and a different brand. Amazing. Amazing. So look, so um, Tim added some water and said those lovely yeah, toffee yeah. is sort of amplified. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, at 46%, it can, it can, it can handle a bit of water. Um, and it, it's definitely, um, yeah, helps bring out some of those, some of those softer notes for sure. So the guys behind the brand is, is Dave, Dave is one. Uh, no, so James uh, James Doherty and his wife Moira. Um, okay. Yeah, they are, and uh, yeah, they they, they 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 yeah they've got a couple of investors, but they are they are the faces of the brand. Uh, and like I say, they is Sleeve League Distillers, and they have underneath under their umbrella they have at the moment Andulaman Gin, which what yeah, and Asaranka Vodka, um, and uh, yeah, the two the two Silkies and and sort of um, yeah the limited runs. And when did you join the team? So uh, I started working with them about three and a half years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So being, I, I've seen it. I've, I mean, when I when I started, it was just, a, yeah, it was the gin and a different variation of this blend. Um, and yeah, from there, it's just grown and grown and grown. And yeah, they, they keep on winning right wars and keep on getting right interest from pe people. And um, 
Yeah, I think, I'd, yeah, I mean, I'm sure everyone says this, but I think they really are one to watch. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think, think, think bright, bright things in the future. Like I say, the guys at, at Darcy, I think we're in, t- we're probably, we're probably maybe a year, two years ahead of them in terms of where they are with their distillery and where we are with our distillery. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it, like I said, I mean, I, I j- joked, at, joked at the beginning about no pressure, but it is great to see the Irish market growing. Uh, nice. cause, yeah. Cause, well, there was a time, I think in 1996, where I believe there was one distillery in, in 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 the in the republic at least yeah. uh, and and now that's growing and growing and growing and, it, and and i feel like for a long time now people have been saying that our whiskey is going to be the next big thing and it's almost the boy that cried wolf because now it really is um, and, and and there's some really good quality product coming out of coming out of islands and some really interesting investment going in yeah i mean the numbers don't lie like i said at the start of the 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 session is that you know it's it is massive right it's growing it's predicted to be the next that well, was the biggest growing spirit right now they said i think i read somewhere by 2030 irish whiskey is going to be consumed in the us more than scotch it's it's, it's expected growth is like astronomical i know that the, i know they expect volume to double by 2030 um, but that, uh, but yeah, I, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you think about, I guess if you think about the US connection with Ireland, it's so historic and strong. Yeah. And, and stronger than the historic connection with, with Scott. So, you know, they just, you know, they, they've probably just been waiting, waiting for the opportunity for the quality to get there before they can, you know, really celebrate their Irish roots in America and, and, and support and support the cause. Absolutely. So guys, let's move on to the fourth one. So this is our last drink of the night so this is bottle number four and this is this really cool i mean it shows better on your screen than it does on mine but it's this lovely sort of black label isn't it yeah. Uh, yeah yeah so yeah so this is the one that's just won a double gold uh at san francisco which we're we're, we're, we're super chuffed about um it's also um it's yeah it's interesting because one thing that we sort of i guess we, we weren't concerned about we had a conversation about when we decided to introduce the peated element so this is the difference is that they've they've been the sherry cask blend and it's now 13 percent peated malt so you get a lot more smokiness and one conversation that we did have was obviously trying to find a place in the market and trying to get the brand out there uh is you know will this turn will that will we'll be turning our backs a little bit on the cocktail world um if we go more peated but within three months of us releasing this um i don't know if you've come across the cocktail bar homeboy in islington uh they have a site in islington they've just opened a site in Bassey, and they've also opened a bottle cocktail shop in uh exmouth market in 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 central london mm. uh, and the head bartender or the guy who owns it uh he used to work for a big chain that had um a very well-known celebrity chef as uh as uh, as an investor and he yeah. said peach and smoke peach and smoke are the best uh combo you can get uh and so he he had one sip of this and uh decided to put in a cocktail called a woo hoo rather than a woo woo so it's a smoke smoked dark silky at the bottom then sort of a peach uh schnapps uh on on the top and it's like a take on the woo hoo and that is being now being like selling like unbelievably well they put it in a bottled cocktail that's being sold online and it was okay. and it's already been featured on tv so our, our, our worry about the smokiness maybe kind of take us out the cocktail market has been entirely wrong yeah uh, and if anything has helped us in the cocktail market so, amazing yeah. i've never seen it okay so i'll have to check that out i'm not, I'm not come across that yeah, so well, I'll, I'll email you the details. But yeah, ho- Homeboy Bar, they've got a site in Islington and a site in Bassey. And there's, yeah, if you go down there, there's uh, the Woohoo Cocktail. And also, if you go online too, it's literally called the Bottle Cocktail Shop. They sell it pre batched. Um, okay. Buy the bottle. Um, and I think actually the pre batched cocktail is going to be on Amazon before long as well. So, Amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's go for it. Yeah, so uh, flavor wise, nose wise, so flavor-wise, like I, I mean, it, it, you, you're still going to get um, a bit of apple in there, a bit of toffee. But what you're going to lose, you're going to lose a bit of sweetness because the sherry cask has been taken out, and you're going to gain a lot more smokiness. Uh, and uh, but hopefully, it should be again. This will be 
this we feel is like the closest that we can get a blend to being what our first single malt will be like yeah um, so that that's really what we're going for is that this is step one this is step two and then when we get to the distillery that will be the final kind of this is our yeah kind of really grown up single malt so yeah yeah i mean that 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 bready that honey sort of has dissipated a little bit and it's turned into kind of darker chocolate and yeah yeah 100 percent dried fruits and that sort of stuff um yeah let's go for a taste yeah Wow. I really like the first one. But that's also, I mean, there's a totally different whiskey. Totally different whiskey. Yeah. I mean, if, my, if I'm, if I'm going to describe what I think is the perfect evening, as you start on this, start, sorry, start on this and finish on this. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. A triple distilled. So it, for those, because, you know, we haven't really covered that in, in anything that we've done. So triple distilled, just tell us about that. Again, like I call the end of the draft, these guys, these are non-chill filters, uh, all of them. They are triple distilled. We do have to be a little bit, um, you know, we are very transparent about, 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 about it with people, but it is being blended for us at another distillery at the moment. Yeah. Um, so there is an element of cloak and dagger about it. Um, you know, I'm not allowed to say what that distillery is, yeah. uh, but it is, again, it's three to five year aged blends. Um, and it's just now it's just ex-bourbon, American oak. Uh, and 13% peated malt, um, and yeah, non-chill filtered, all of it. Um, so it keeps that flavour, um, really, really keeps that flavour. Yeah, I love it. It's very good. Very good. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> yeah, so if anyone's added water, let me know uh, mm. what it's like and how it changes. 100%, this one, this one with a drop of water, um, again, you know, it is, it is a lot, it's a lot richer. It's a lot richer. And differently, right? So, just in terms of difference, you're smoking your barley, right? You're peating your barley. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's that's what the distillers will be doing, mm. which is different to say the Scotch Isla whiskies because they're getting, you know, you in this you're not getting that iodine, you're not getting that TCP element. This yeah. is much more just about that softer smoke. Yeah, no, I'm sure you've heard this before, but a lot of people say that um, you know, Pete Pete is that guy you invite to the party, he'll never leave. Uh no matter where no matter where, <laughs> yeah. no matter where you where, where where you put it in, you honestly you can do whatever you want, you'll never get rid of it. And it is a case of yeah, like everything, finding the balance and getting the balance right. And it's just like, yeah, just like cooking, you know, you someone can give you the ingredients to cook a dish, but you've got to find the balance. Uh yeah. and, that's that's what makes you a good chef uh, and this is exactly the same we, we, we're all playing with the same ingredients but it's all about who's going to find the balance mm. Mm. yeah yeah it's really good and this one just come out when did this come out this one yeah so out? like i said i mean it, it literally came out midway through last year i think we were about to do a big launch and yeah like the the whiskey exchange so yeah i mean for the record yeah you and then uh and then and then lockdown the second lockdown happened <laughs> yeah. Um, so so yeah but it, you know in a, in a way that's been um it's not been the worst thing because it it, it it kind of takes the pressure off everyone understands where you are and you kind of you can kind of almost soft launch it um and and straight from the get-go um we were having positive feedback and we knew we wanted a good thing and we really think that i mean it is all it is obviously this one's been on the market for a, a good sort of um what three four years longer but we yeah. think we th this will usurp this before long uh no doubt um because it is i mean the price point between them is like on the rrp is you know it's a three three four quid it's not it's not it's not a huge amount yeah um, and 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 this is uh yeah it's quickly becoming a favorite and you know for as well you know there are places again the Corrig corrigans um uh, you know the the big the big irish in, well, the people with big influence in London in terms of, um, yeah, in terms in terms of Ireland, which is like I think the guys at, at the Corrigan Collection who've just opened Daffodil Mulligan and Gibneys London, uh, they uh, yeah, they I think they're stocking both, and they're supposed to be some of the most influential Irish bar owners in London, and the guys at Homeboy as well, especially some of the most influential bar owners in, in Ireland, Irish bar owners in London. They they're all they're all really into it and and, and using it as much as they can amazing amazing so 
So, any comments? Hmm. I really like it. I really like it. Thanks for your time tonight, Jimmy. No, not at all. Well, thank you for having me. Um, really good. I, I, I think I'm going with that out of the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, have, I do have, like yeah. smoke. I, I'll tell you what. Have have two more of these, and you'll want that one. <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I do like the smoke, but I really like the yeah. obvious fruitiness, the yeah. freshness of of this particular one. Um, and maybe you're right. Maybe it's just you know still light. Maybe I'm thinking it's still early, so yeah, this will yeah, be. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, they're both they're both very good. And as usual, uh, if if you are interested in any of these, we'll get the price up for you. And you all get a 15% discount uh, on any of these bottles. So um, let us know what you'd like and um, and we'll be happy to help you. Uh, but also, thank you very much to Jimmy for joining us tonight. No Jimmy, thank thanks you. Great. Thanks for thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, and I'm sure we'll we'll see you again. And actually, you have to come and see us when we, you know. Now, now, now things are when you can. I mean, I'll, I'll give you a call on Monday and we'll set something up. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we look forward to seeing some of the other products as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah? All right, good stuff. Jimmy, thank you very much. Thanks, Jess. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Take Cheers. care. Well, thank well, you. Right. So, yeah, look, I think there's a lot of... Some people are going to be going with some of the Darcy stuff. Some people are going to go with the Silky stuff. Did you have a favourite, Shane? Yeah, I think it's a bit mixed from everyone. I think there's a few people there. I know Simon was saying he's, he likes the Darcy 40. Um, Al said it's a bit close to call. Uh, Sarah, I think, said the, the last one was her favourite of the evening, which is the Peated. Um, Tim's kind of going that way, starting with a four and then working back. I'm, I'm the same. I, I, I'm kind of... Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of drawn... In terms of... See, I, I would normally I'd be drawn to that, that port cask from Darcy's but then mm. saying that I do like quaffable ones that are just easy to sit back yeah and for me that's the that's the original those I think I've got that kind of aspect to them where you can just yeah you can just quaff them back I guess my yeah. sweeter tooth would go more towards the silky there's definitely more sweetness in there and that toffee just kind of goes through uh, yeah and like I think it was Tim that said pointed out in the water or Simon pointed out yeah that just elevates it massively so yeah Good whiskey is all around that year, I think. Really good. Yeah, yeah, really, really impressed. So that's just a little tip of about Irish whiskey and how different it is to Scotch. You know, it's not so intense. It's not so barley. It's much lighter, much fruitier, in an obvious way. Um, so yeah, re really good. And and obviously we've got another another Irish whiskey next. With yes, the, with the next week. That's no, not this week. That's on the. Uh, 4th of June, is that right? 4th of June. Yeah, 4th, 4th of June. 4th of June is our next Irish whiskey. So we've got two Irish whiskey in a row, and that one is going to be Waterford. And Waterford's really interesting, very, very good. Uh, we'll have four, I think, in their range. And uh, those of you that have been on our Nicker tastings and some of the other tastings will know Stephanie. So she's going to be joining us. And also, I think the distiller is going to be joining us as well. And they're slightly different. They're, they're all about, they're, they are producing whiskey. And they're all about terroir. They're all about, um, you know, the soil and the barley and the water and everything else. So uh, it's going to be a different style of tasting to what we've had tonight. But again, show, showcasing what Irish whiskey is all about. Excellent. Yeah, I think most people that actually are on tonight did buy the double ticket. So you haven't got to buy that, even though the emails are going out. Um, you know, you're already entered into that one. Uh, but anyone that didn't, obviously, yeah, links there on our social, and uh, you can just, or I think we sent a few emails out as well. Um, I did also over the um, literally after it happened, I've sent you guys an email, so it should already be in your inbox with the link for the video tonight. So apologize for that. Not too sure what was happening. It was streaming on our end on my screen, uh, and I saw it on my phone for a while, but for some reason it was just the loading, uh, which I think was to do with YouTube. So um, I've sent you the the link. Just click straight through. It will take you through to the YouTube video. And then you yeah. can watch it in your own time. Seven minutes. You've got plenty of whiskey to uh, enjoy it with. Um, but yeah, other than that, we will we will definitely see you guys at the next tasting. Um, and remember, yes, as always, fifteen percent discount off any bottles you see today. Um, just drop us a DM or an email, and we'll get those orders um, ready for you. Uh, I think my tonight with yeah. these. Yeah, exactly for me. That's what I'm saying. I think yeah, I, I'm, I'm I may be slightly drawn to the silky because of my sweet tooth, but. The, the Darcy's is lovely. I mean, that's really, 
really easy drinking, definitely. It's weird, isn't it? Because the package is so simple, but it's it's very, very yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those things you, you, you could easily say, and even to myself I'd say it, don't judge a book by its cover. Because I wouldn't look at that whiskey with a label and think, there's going to be something good in that bottle. <laughs> you know? Um, you but no, it's really, really nice. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. yeah. Also, don't forget, on the 5th of June is our Navy Gin tasting. Yeah, anyone that likes their gin as well, Navy Gin, uh, the link is on our, if you, well, if you follow through from Tomoki, you'll go to our Craft Gins page and the link is on there. Uh, if not, check your emails. There'll be a link in there for that. Um, but yeah, that's the next one on the 5th of June. Yeah. It's a double weekend. Yeah. Actually, you could do whiskey on the Friday and really, really, really strong gins on the, on the Saturday. So yeah, excellent stuff. Cool. Great, guys. Right, Thanks so very much. Thanks have for joining us. Have a great weekend. Yeah. And we'll see you all soon. See you later, guys. Ciao.